Good evening everyone, time for this week's silver update. As you can see, we're still trending higher in this pretty long trend line all the way back from the beginning of QE2 back in August of last year. And we're still trending higher, the volatility is still high. And we're looking for a test of the trend line. Looks like we're forming a little pennant here off of the larger one. So maybe kind of boring for a while or it may get really exciting really fast. Not really sure. We do have a key date coming up on Monday which is Martin Armstrong's turning point day for sentiment in his economic confidence model. So we're looking to see what pans out for that day. What he did say that he was looking for was if we had a huge correction in gold or silver that he was looking for a bottom and then a rally from that point on. Clearly that's not going to happen in gold. Could it happen in silver? My opinion is that for it to happen in silver we would have to have a breakdown below this line probably down to this support so if for some reason we get a freak move on Monday down to this line or below then perhaps that's going to be a fulfillment of Martin Armstrong's economic confidence model turn but I'm not really sure the currencies don't really show any signs of tops or bottoms like dramatic changes so I want to jump over and spend a little time on Bitcoin it's been a fairly controversial topic and I just got into it today because as I was leaving the office Friday there were a couple of the really smart engineers in my office ones kind of like a hacker guru type and the other ones kind of like a ex-military encryption type and they were both discussing Bitcoin and one had a chart of Bitcoin which happened to go through a dramatic price crash over this period of time so I decided to take this opportunity to learn about it and investigate it and I'm just going to share with you some of the things I've found so you want to start off by going to the Bitcoin site and what Bitcoin is, really briefly for beginners, it is an encrypted currency that is, is generated on computers using the CPU power of your computer. It can be traded and because it has an encrypted hash to verify its authenticity and that it's only spent once it can't be copied and spent again so it's a unique thing it was developed by a gentleman named Satoshi Nakamoto and it's a very complex technical paper that I'll, I will link here but I was very interested when I saw that price crash that began and it was kinda interesting that it coincided with the raid on Kitco in Canada I don't think there's any connection between the two but it's interesting that I think the powers that be are starting to worry a little bit about some of the alternatives that people are looking at as their fiat currencies are devaluing to nothing so to start off with what I found was a site on Mt. Gox which is one of the sites that you can trade bitcoins at and it had some instructions and I'll link this for you to show you how you can track the price and it's really neat software so the first step is you download and install the Sierra chart software and then there's a feed that has all the historical data for bitcoin prices you download that and start the feed and it just runs and this is this is the feed right here and it just every time there's a trade 
of bitcoins it marks a price and you can see the price is at about fourteen dollars and twenty five cents per bitcoin and I think this next number is the volume but this is the feed that you feed into that software and this is the software here and you follow the instructions that they give you and it tells you to go to open a new intraday chart and then you'll choose the Mt. Gox feed which is bitcoins and US dollars and that'll give you this which is the latest prices for bitcoins now I like to put it in candlesticks and customize it so the easiest way to use this software as they instruct you on that page you use your F5 and F6 button so you go to F5 and what I will do is put in all the days for Bitcoin and then I also want to put it on candlesticks and then I will go to F6 which is the technical trading studies that you can use and of course I always use the MACD so we'll add that and I like to get some volume in there so we'll, we'll add the volume and then that's what you have now you can choose your daily this is a daily chart of Bitcoin prices you can see here's the dates down here just this week is when we had the Bitcoin explosion in price started on the third basically it had been trading around two bucks to four bucks and then maybe ran up to about eight bucks and then just blasted all the way up to 32 bucks and we're back down to 14 bucks so huge move now you can scroll back and get historical prices using this which is a really neat function you just scroll your scroll bar and your technicals move with it and you can see it was not too long ago it was back in February that bitcoins were 73 cents uh, they just did a dollar for the first time so you can see we've had a lot of price crashes here's a run up from about 10 cents to 50 cents and then we go all the way back to last fall and that's the beginning of Bitcoin trading so they start off at six cents and they ran all the way up to thirty two dollars so congratulations to all the folks that were in this game from the beginning I know da Vinci has really gone crazy about bitcoins lately and if he's been generating bitcoins all through here then he's done very well for himself so I don't think that this is the end of it I think that this is showing you that uh, something's really happening here and is this gonna be the key turn date that Martin Armstrong was talking about interesting maybe it's bitcoins anyway so to show you what I've learned and by the way bitcoins can be traded anonymously uh, they're encrypted and the key is something that only that you hold now I don't completely understand it but you if you're anonymous on the internet now being anonymous on the internet is kind of difficult and I want to cover that real quick if you want to be anonymous on the internet you need to have Tor and Tor is an onion router it's uh, the concept is pretty simple to explain but very complex in how it works basically the onion router it puts you on a peer-to-peer -peer network with a whole bunch of other users and then it brings your data back to you through an onion of routers and the IP address that you're using is not revealed and the IP address that you're going to is not revealed so anybody in between and then if you encrypt the data along the way they can't they can't hijack the data and find out what's in it because it's garbage to them and they also can't tell where you're coming from so combine Tor with Bitcoin and you may have the potential for anonymous currency transactions etc so very interesting stuff that's happening right now 
I don't think the powers that be are too pleased with it, but I'm not sure there's really going to be much they can do about it. So back to Bitcoin. Now, if you go to Mt. Gox, and I went there and signed up an account, you go to the website, sign up an account, and you can buy and sell Bitcoins. Now, the question is, how do you fund this account? Well, you know, you, you can bank wire it, and there's other ways, but the way that I decided to do it, because I've, I've decided that I'm going to try to play around and trade these and see how it works. Now, if you hit a refresh on it, you can see the price, the latest price is right there, 1425. 1416 is the bid. And you can see that uh, Mt. Gox takes 0.65% for each trade. So that's that's fairly reasonable, a half a percent. I don't think that that's that high. The spread's not that bad. This is a new thing. We're on the ground floor, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Now, if you want to add funds to this account, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can send cash or a check, and that's kind of a pain. And there used to be PayPal, but I don't think it's working. Now, I decided to do it with this Dwalla.com. There's a 25 cent fee, which is that seems pretty reasonable. If you go to Dwalla.com, you sign up an account there. And I signed up an account. And then what you do is with that Dwalla account, what you do is you go to you can go to deposit money, and you will enter in your. And I took a. Uh, just a random savings account that I had and threw some money into it and I'm gonna wait for this to verify and then you put in your bank routing number you put in your account number and then once that's there I will transfer I think I'm gonna throw a hundred bucks over to this account then once I have this Dwall account funded then for 25 cents I can transfer that money over to Mt. Gox once I have a hundred dollars in Mt. Gox then I will be able to trade dollars for bitcoins and I just wanted to play around with it and see what I could do buying and selling bitcoins and since we had this tremendous bitcoin crash it uh, definitely piqued my interest but the fact that bitcoins at $32 a coin is absolutely stunning considering that they started from six cents now I don't completely understand how all of this works, so any of you that do can explain some of the things to me that I don't understand. What you do with your Bitcoin, uh, well, the way you generate them is by downloading the Bitcoin client, which is a peer-to-peer -peer encrypted client, which is running these hashes all the time and it's using your CPU to run these hashes as you can see I've got this Bitcoin client down here and it's running it says it has 20 connections and it's 130,180 blocks and I have zero a balance of zero bitcoins so apparently it takes a long time to generate the coins my understanding is that that your GPU, your graphics processing unit, has the ability to do a large, a lot larger number of hashes than your CPU can do. So I think that's what DaVinci was doing: was buying machines with a bunch of GPUs and then uh, trying to generate his bitcoins using those. Your main cost is going to be the electricity to do so, and I believe that the more people that are doing this, the less chance you have of successfully generating the coins. I don't know, so I'm just gonna let this run in the background and see what it does and let this feed go. So I have to wait for my Bitcoin account to, or I'm sorry, I have to wait for my Dwalla account to be verified, then I'll transfer the funds and then I'll start trading dollars for Bitcoins. There's some things I don't understand right now. One thing I don't understand is how I can get a software program that can show me the type of hashes that are going on because I remember seeing on DaVinci's that he was watching the hashes in real time 
So if anyone has that, send that to me. The other thing I don't really understand is how you can get, if I have these bitcoins, say I have 10 bitcoins in my Mt. Gox account, can I download those? Do I well, let's see, withdraw funds? Okay, I guess. Oh, here's my Bitcoin address, so I put my Bitcoin address in there. So I guess I just, uh, when I have Bitcoins in here, I put the number and then I put my Bitcoin address, which is based on my software, and apparently it downloads those. So that's something I have to play with. Don't really understand, but uh, it's a fascinating concept. Apparently, there's only 22 million bitcoins that are allowed to be produced, and once those bitcoins are produced, there will no longer be any more bitcoins produced. Then they will just merely trade in increments of bitcoins. As the value of bitcoins goes up, you'll just trade in smaller increments. I think you can spend one bitcoin cent, and even maybe you can go down to a tenth or a hundredth or a thousandth of a cent. So I guess, in theory, once all the bitcoins are produced, there won't be any reason to produce any more, which will limit inflation, or perhaps there's an algorithm for them to be generated at a certain percent in the future. That's something else I need to investigate. So decided to jump on the Bitcoin bandwagon, and I will periodically let you know how it goes. I, I don't agree with the people who are bashing bitcoins and saying they're not money because... I agree they're not money, only gold and silver are money, but even gold and silver aren't being used as money. Gold is being used as money more so. Silver has been demonetized, and the people, and I'm trying to encourage as many people as I can, the people are rapidly remonetizing silver. We're, we're touching 14 here. It looks like the Bitcoin's trying to break below 14. Haven't seen it touch into the 13s yet, so... Apparently, this crash is still going. But anyway, even though Bitcoins are not money, they offer an interesting, a very interesting way to transact things. And another thing that I don't really understand, and I'm not really sure how that works, is since the transactions with Bitcoins are final, in other words, when you send a Bitcoin to someone and they accept it, then that's gone. It's Those transactions can't be reversed. So my question is, how do you guarantee that you're going to get what you paid for? What if they just don't send the goods? So there's still the problem that remains that you see on eBay and PayPal now, of course, face-to-face -face transactions would be very similar to cash transactions. My understanding is you can load these bitcoins onto a thumb drive, and I guess in theory you could probably load like a hundred, say, a hundred thousand dollars onto a thumb drive and take it anywhere you want and load it up. Those are some things I need to investigate that I don't really understand, but uh, it it looks to be a very promising type of virtual currency and if it truly is unbreakable and if the peer-to-peer -peer network checking system actually works the way it was designed which I think if that's the case then you'll probably see the confidence in the price of bitcoins reflect that so if bitcoins continue to rise in price I think that that will be a strong indication that this security feature of the peer-to-peer -peer network is functional and can't be broken. And that would be a very interesting situation to see this type of virtual currency come alive and to see people begin transacting with this currency. I see it very similar to silver and the reason for it rising, very similar to the reason that silver is rising is because people are trying to escape the fiat money system which has been corrupted by compromised politicians and central bankers and people who are not willing to face up to the hard 
decisions that have to be made to rein in the profligate spending of various governments and for that reason they're all sacrificing their respective currencies so silver is absolutely the best way to protect yourself I believe gold is next those are both real money but you might want to consider jumping into bitcoins and seeing what that's about and I'm thinking about doing that at least starting to trade them and maybe see if I can generate them and if people can give me pointers on that I would much appreciate it and we'll talk to you next time